Over 700 Israelis murdered, thousands injured, and over 100 hostages in Gaza. This is a special briefing, the Hamas war against Israel. And shalom from Israel. I'm Michael Dixon for Sam with us. The holiday of Simchat Torah is meant to be about joy, but this year it was anything but. Instead, unbearable sadness. As you know, Hamas took the opportunity to launch an attack against Israeli civilians, and the result has been carnage, massacre. Thousands of rockets fired towards Israeli communities, the brutal murder of innocents on the streets, attacking the bodies of those they slaughtered, kidnapping women, children, the elderly, and the infirm, and reveling in the bloodlust, taking videos of the atrocities they perpetrated, unspeakable images. The world has seen the true face of Palestinian terrorism. Israel is at war, a war launched against it by Hamas, and today many people all across the country went off to serve in the reserves of the IDF, protecting Israelis all over Israel. First and foremost, we want to send our condolences to all those who've been murdered and the families who are losing their loved ones and our thoughts are with all of those who are injured. We send strength at this time to those serving in the Israel Defense Forces and I also want to thank you, our supporters around the world, for rallying around Israelis at their time of need. We felt that support loud and clear. A little later, I'll be joined by our international senior educator, Charlotte Korchak, to make sense of this all. But first of all, joining us for a live briefing is the former international spokesperson for the IDF, now in reserves during this war effort, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Comricos. Lieutenant Colonel, thank you so much for joining Stand With Us TV today, and thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I hope you can uh, I hope you can hear me well. Can you give us an update? We hear you fine. Thank, can you give us an update as things stand right now? No, let's go for that. Yes, uh, Michael. Uh, there's a slight delay, so I will try to speak slowly and hopefully my words will be understood. Uh, this is, uh, in terms of casualties, the worst day in our history. Never before have so many Israelis been killed by any of our enemies in one day. We're 36 hours into this war, and uh, as Michael said, unprecedented numbers, more than 700 Israelis confirmed dead, and sadly, that number is not final and it will rise. Uh, as we're speaking, fighting is ongoing in southern Israel. Sadly, we have not yet been able to find and kill all of the terrorists that were able to get into Israel. That is what we're doing as we speak. We've been doing that since the early hours of yesterday morning. And it's been many, many hours of trying to find all of the terrorists in order to uh, safeguard our civilians. Uh, we are all appalled and enraged by the level of brutality, by the beastly behavior of these terrorists who crossed into Israel yesterday and went door to door, house to house in Israeli communities, executed Israeli civilians and took hostages into Gaza, not only young men and women, but children, babies, women, the elderly, and even disabled persons. And unfortunately, sadly, we have a very large number of Israeli civilians and military that are being held by Hamas in Gaza. And I'm not talking about two or three or ten. Unfortunately, much more than that. It's an unprecedented situation for us in Israel. Never before have so many of our civilians been at the mercy of terror organizations, and we will have to find the 
tactical solution to deal with this issue. By the way, sadly, there are also many Israelis with double nationalities that are to now in the hands of Hamas. There are American Israelis, British Israelis, French Israelis, German Israelis, and perhaps of other nationalities as well. So this is not only our issue, but it's an issue that involves many other Western countries. But it is our responsibility, and we have no doubts about that. Uh, our plan is first and foremost to safeguard the communities of southern Israel and make sure that the last terrorist still inside Israel is caught, preferably killed or apprehended. Once that is confirmed, we will focus all of our efforts on the Gaza Strip and on delivering a long, hard and uh, tremendously powerful blow to Hamas in Gaza. We will be focusing on two things. And this is according to the guidance that we've been given by the Israeli government. The first thing is to completely eradicate all of Hamas's military capabilities. At the end of this war, Hamas shouldn't be able to fire a, a toy gun. And the second thing is that we shall take away Hamas's ability to govern and control the Gaza Strip. These are the two ob objectives that we have been given by our democratically elected government, and that is what the IDF will be doing. We're already striking from the air at uh, quite an enhanced pace, and we have struck hundreds of targets already. We've been able to kill 400, at least 400 terrorists that crossed into Israel or were on their way back to Gaza, and we took them out in close quarter combat hand-to-hand -hand and at close distances, our special forces and soldiers confronted them and killed them wherever they found them. And uh, we are looking, of course, we're hunting down the rest of them that are inside Israel, and we are also on the hunt for Hamas terrorists hiding in Gaza. Hamas, by design, are using the civilian infrastructure in Gaza as their human shields. The Hamas terrorists, they're hiding behind the, all of the civilians. All of the tunnels are underneath the civilians. And now that we are hunting the terrorists, unfortunately, there are Palestinian civilians in the middle. This is Hamas's responsibility. And Hamas started this atrocity by murdering Israeli civilians and by abducting Israelis into the Gaza Strip at an unprecedented scale, and our response will be of an unprecedented nature. And responsibility lies squarely and firmly on Hamas's shoulders and nobody else. And don't you let anybody confuse you with who is responsible and who is to blame for the carnage and loss of life that we have already suffered and that is going to be suffered inside Gaza. We're going to continue to strike Hamas uh, wherever they are, and we are developing all other military options, including, and definitely not limited to, a ground invasion of the Gaza Strip. There are difficult, extremely difficult questions that are voiced by, is, by, by the public in Israel. They demand answers as to how this happened, why the IDF failed to stop these terrorists and uh, how the situation evolved to what it, or deteriorated to what it is today. The IDF has uh, a serious soul searching to do. We, we will do that and we will provide honest, clear answers to those who uh, deserve them and that is the Israeli public. But that is not the focus now. The focus now is to set things straight in Israel to kill the terrorists that are still here, and then to start uh, striking Hamas with the force that has not yet been seen. One last thing is a little bit of a zoom out and to talk about what's happening along our other borders. We have Hezbollah, another Iranian proxy, which is deployed in Lebanon and is uh, armed to its teeth with Iranian weapons.
hundreds or tens of thousands of rockets at their disposal, and they are a much more powerful enemy than Hamas is from a military perspective. We have mobilized tens of thousands of Israeli reservists and sent them up to the border with Lebanon in order to strengthen our defenses, in order to make sure that we don't sustain any type of attacks that we have sustained uh, down on the Gaza border. We have also enlisted about 100,000 Israeli reservists and they are being deployed to the south, preparing for various missions that they will be, uh, they will be tasked with. We have lots of reserve forces that are currently operating in Judea and Samaria. Some people call that the West Bank, but the real name of that area is the biblical Judea and Samaria. Uh, we have uh, deployed lots of troops there, and hopefully that area will not escalate. But there is a threat that Palestinian terrorists or just ordinary Palestinian terrorists uh, or just ordinary Palestinian terrorists will try to use or abuse the mayhem and the confusion and perhaps try to attack Israeli civilians in communities in Judea and Samaria. So we are very vigilant there as well. Last thing that I will say is, and you know this because you're on a Stand With Us uh, event, you know how important it is to speak up, you know how important it is to stand up against lies and libel. I've been out giving interviews in the international, mostly American media. I've been uh, giving interviews in the international media, and so far, Israel still enjoys a lot of international legitimacy, but I am not confused. That is usually a very, very scarce resource, and it will evaporate and diminish as soon as we start using our force and delivering blows to our enemies. And then that will be the time that we will start seeing criticism and lessons in humanity delivered to Israel by Israel haters, anti-Semites, and people who hold Israel to a totally different standard that no other democratic country defending itself are held to. And that needs to be met with clear, concise, and very robust messages. First of all, we have to believe that we are the right side. We are the side that has been attacked by savages coming from the Gaza Strip, butchering our civilians and abducting them. And we are responding to that savagery, and we will continue to respond until the last savage in Gaza says, enough, I give up. And until they don't have the military capability to inflict damage on Israeli civilians, only then shall we stop. And I hope, and I count on you here in this uh, broadcast, that you'll fight our fight, that you will stand beside us, and that you will speak up against all of those Israel haters, some of them masquerading as humanitarians, and some of them masquerading as progressives and liberals and what have you not, speak up against them and put them in their place whenever they'll start lying about what Israel is doing and isn't doing. That's my message to you. It is difficult times, but I can assure you that the people of Israel here in the state of Israel is coming together, setting aside our differences and all of the political nonsense that's been going on over the last half year in Israel and focusing on what needs to be done, defeating this enemy and any other enemy that may rise and try to challenge us. And that's what we are going to do. Thank you. Lieutenant Colonel, thank you so much. I know your time is precious. We will let you get back, but I can assure you that those watching today will be supporting Israel, supporting the IDF, and making sure that that message goes out. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, and shalom. Shalom. And uh, now I'm going to bring in our next guest, who is no stranger to audiences of Stand With Us, our international senior educator, Charlotte Korchak. Charlotte, thank you for being with us. I want to say it's good to be here, but I really wish we weren't doing this today. Yeah, there is a heaviness um, that surrounds everything uh, that's going on. Uh, people should know in Israel, we have been uh, heartbroken by what's happened, as I know our supporters have around the world with these horribly tragic and uh, evil images 
of what's happened to so many of our brothers and sisters. Um, I want to talk about that in just a moment. But before we get to that, what do people need to know about Hamas? Uh, what should we be teaching people about Hamas? Okay, so Hamas is a terrorist organization, and that's what they should be called. Um, Joe Biden got on TV, and the first thing he said was the terrorist organization Hamas, and that's the media should follow suit. Hamas is a terrorist organization. They were founded in 1987 with a very clear intent, the destruction of Israel, the obliteration of the Jews. And you don't have to take my word for it. It's in their charter. It's been there from the get-go. And since they were founded, they have pretty much always targeted not just Israeli soldiers, but Israeli civilians. In this attack in particular, almost exclusively, their targets were Israeli civilians. They got through soldiers, but to get to civilians. So Hamas is a terrorist organization. Now, a little bit of that history. Israel took control over the Gaza Strip back in 1967 from the Egyptians who had occupied that territory between 1949 and 1967. Israel then proceeded to build up the Gaza Strip. They laid down much of the infrastructure, some of it that still exists until today. And eventually there were also Israelis that moved into the Gaza Strip. In the year 2005, after five years of the worst terrorism Israel has ever seen, which as a child of that time period known as the Second Intifada, it's, it's more and more remarkable to me thinking about that we talk about the Second Intifada as one of the worst time periods in Israeli history when we lost over a thousand Israelis in the span of four and a half years. Well, the death toll from this one day is now over 700 in one day. And after five years of that relentless violence, Israel decided to take a bold step and they withdrew entirely from the Gaza Strip. All 20,000 soldiers who had been placed there to conduct counterterrorism against organizations like Hamas and others who embedded themselves in the Strip. In 2005, they not only removed 20,000 soldiers, they also removed 8,000 Israeli civilians from the Gaza Strip, leaving the Gaza Strip completely free of Israelis. This was an opportunity. It was an opportunity for the Palestinian Authority, for Palestinian leadership to take this region and turn it into something that could flourish. It could have been the Singapore of the Middle East, as many referred to it as. They could have built up resorts on the coast of the Mediterranean. They could have taken the many greenhouses that Israel left behind and used them to develop agriculture. They could have employed their people. Instead, they turned it into a base of terror. Within a year and a half of Israel withdrawing in August of 2005, Hamas took over the Strip violently from their rival faction within the Palestinian Authority, Fatah, throwing Fatah members off the roofs of buildings, shooting them in the kneecaps, brutality that is similar to the brutality we have now seen inflicted upon innocent Israelis and Israeli soldiers. Hamas has ruled that territory, in, singularly ruled that territory since June of 2007. So this territory has now been under 16 years of Hamas rule, which I should also say means it's been under 16 years of Hamas neglect. They have neglected the territory. They have spent most of their finances on terror and very little on infrastructure. Today, there are over 2.2 million people living in Gaza, many of them brainwashed by Hamas education, education that we see not only in regular schools in Gaza, but even in United Nations schools in Gaza teaching them that Israelis are their enemy, that Jews are apes and pigs, that we should be slaughtered. And tragically, many of those men who grew up with that rhetoric yesterday decided to do exactly what they were taught to do, go into Israel and brutalize Israelis as if we were animals. We That's saw what... that ideology play out, as you rightly say. Uh, some people will be coming out of uh, celebrating Simchat Torah. Some people may not have caught up. Um, let's talk about some of the things that have happened here, because I think it's important that the world should know. Uh, share with us, if you can, some of the things that we've seen and heard. So I'll give the numbers. I'll just repeat. I know uh, Jonathan Kolikus said them. It's worth repeating. We have over 700 dead, 700 casualties. The um, worst massacre of Jews in one day since the Holocaust. This is this is our September 11th times 10. I believe I ran the numbers. I'm not a mathematician, but if this was the United States, it would be as if 42 to 45,000 Americans lost their lives in one day if we were doing it per capita. I want people to swallow that number for a second. I want people to remember the amount of people in Israel who will be burying family members and friends over the next week. So 700 casualties. And that's weirdly to say not the hardest part. 
The hardest part is the 100 plus who are still alive, who have been taken hostage in Gaza. We are not talking about soldiers. We are talking about innocent civilians. We are talking about women. We are talking about elderly 85 year old women and others. We are talking about babies. We are talking about children as young as one, two, three years old who were dragged into Gaza, who are now being taunted by young Palestinian children in Gaza. Again, reinforcing that that brainwashing of that ideology is alive and well in the Gaza Strip today. So 700 casualties dead, 100 kidnapped, 100 and potentially more, but 100 confirmed kidnapped in Gaza, over 2,200 injured, and of those injured, 345 of them so far are in critical condition. And unfortunately, I hate to echo what Konleku said, but we will most likely see that number rise. But yeah. those numbers don't do justice. I uh, don't think anyone here can swallow what 700 really truly means. And you think of each life lost. And I wanna share just a couple of the stories, the horrific stories that I had to read throughout my evening to prepare for this. One story was in a kibbutz, a small town along the Gaza border. A young girl who was in her early 20s, a medic, had gone to help people, um, to give aid, to give aid to the wounded, uh, to tend to their wounds. Uh, she gathered with some of them in the clinic within the kibbutz. And unfortunately, terrorists had taken over the town. And they went door to door killing people. And she waited and she was communicating with her family and she waited and waited, hoping that the IDF would come and rescue her. But as we know, they were overwhelmed across Kibbutzim throughout the South. And she waited. The last thing her parents heard was that they, that the terrorists had entered the clinic and she said, this is probably the end. And then they called incessantly until she picked up the phone screaming. They had shot her in the legs. And she said, they've killed everyone else and they're on me. She said, Himalai, they're on me. And then the phone went dead. It's just one of many. Um, yeah, and, and of course, Hamas being who Hamas are, they videoed a lot of their brutality. And so there are videos out there when we've shared things judiciously on Stand With Us, but so that the world can see we blurred things out. And there are horrible videos out there um, that many people will have seen ridiculing an elderly woman with dementia before they kidnap her. Um, I, I saw an interview on Israeli TV today with a, a man whose mother-in-law, his wife, and his two daughters, ages two and four, were kidnapped to Gaza. Um, people may have seen the images on video of them being bundled onto a cart and driven off and a, a makeshift hijab being put on her head. Uh, and then absolutely brutal scenes of murders that have taken place all across Israel's south. It's almost too much to bear. Um, but this is what we faced. And then, of course, this mass party with so many youth, so many young people um, confirmed dead now. Uh, and then many who are injured. And it's been called Israel's 9-11. Uh, and, and of course, a surprise attack, a mass casualty event that's gone up and up, a horrific jihadi terrorist attack aimed squarely at civilians. But today being day two uh, has been like the day after 9-11. We've seen photos of people who are missing with phone numbers, families anxiously begging for help of anyone who can find them. And of course, that information is coming out all too painfully slowly. It's almost unbearable. Yeah, um, a little bit more about the party in the desert, just so again, our viewers understand what we are talking about. We are talking about a rave that took place in the desert. Over a thousand people were attending this rave. And you can see video footage of people dancing, celebrating, having this great time in the early hours of the morning. And in the distance, you can see the Hamas paragliders gliding in eventually to land right on the outskirts of that campground in the desert. And they proceeded to then mow people down with guns. People ran to their vehicles to try to get away and a traffic jam ensued. And then Hamas came upon the cars and people yet again started to run from the cars as people were being gunned down in their cars. And they ran into the fields and there's videos of people running through the fields, just dropping as they're being hit with gunfire. 
We have stories of people climbing trees to avoid the gunfire and then being shot in the trees. We have reports of people hiding everywhere they can and some miraculous stories of of some who together were able to find a hiding place and they hunkered down for 24 hours, not communicating in fear of Hamas finding them. And luckily they were found safely. But the tragedy is that of those a thousand, we know that approximately 350 have already been killed and more bodies are being found. Uh, one in particular is was a, a German national female who was attending this this festival and we know we have confirmed reports of her casual of her death because her body was taken into gaza and mutilated and again i do not recommend to anyone to watch those videos the tragedy of this is that her mother actually saw those videos and was able to identify her daughter through a tattoo on her leg and so unfortunately while i can shield all of our viewers from that video this mother in germany was not shielded uh, she posted a video herself in german pleading with Hamas to release her daughter's body. This is just one of countless stories. And I don't think you'll ever, will ever really be able to understand the pure scale of this. This is our 9-11. And some people I've also heard comparing it to Pearl Harbor. And I wanna make something very clear. This is not our Pearl Harbor. Again, Pearl Harbor was a tragedy in America, but it was targeting soldiers. It was targeting Navy bases in Hawaii. This was an attack that was fully coordinated against civilians. They went to some army bases on the border to stop the army, but then they proceeded immediately into the border towns, took over those towns, and then went door to door executing people and mutilating them. So this is not Pearl Harbor. This is September 11th on a whole nother scale, because again, this is September 11th with hostages, with hostages as young as six months old a mother with a baby strapped to her chest and her young three-year-old child, a ginger boy that you could not forget being marched into Gaza at gunpoint by terrorists. This is unprecedented, what we are seeing in Israel. I lived through the second intifada, what again, many would argue was the worst time period in Israeli history in terms of civilian casualties and the fear instilled in Israeli civilians. This is a fear like we have never seen before. The fear of those who hunker down in those towns, hoping and praying that before Hamas got to them, the army got to them. For some, that was the case. For others, that was not the case. For some, we had hostage crisis situations going on in different towns where there, were, there weren't just hostages taken into Gaza, but hostages held in their homes. Also, horrific video of a family, father, mother, son, daughter, being held hostage in their homes crying because they had just witnessed their older daughter being murdered in front of their eyes. And as the children were crying, Hamas was yelling at them to calm down and be quiet and threatening them. As the mother in the background just kept repeating, this didn't happen, this didn't happen, this didn't happen. These are stories that will be ingrained in the minds of Israelis for the rest of our lives. This is again, greater than our September 11th. And of course, all, not, not just Jewish people, but all people of good conscience will see those photos and they've obviously made headlines around the world and will agree with, you know, most respectable world leaders that they need to stand with Israel. Um, but of course, you know, people are fickle and, and things, that kind of opinion may wane. And of course, you have a very active anti-Israel BDS campaign that put this information online. So Charlotte, if our viewers right now are seeing justifications, hard for us to imagine, but we've seen them. So justifications of people who say, well, you know what? You occupy Gaza and you do the same thing to Gazans. What would your response to that be? There is no comparison. And anyone trying to make one doesn't understand the facts of this conflict. I've been thinking about this a lot since I've seen so many of these comments justifying these casualties. We did a, an Instagram live last night and the response that I was getting was, is you deserve this. You're getting a taste of your own medicine. Israelis have never, ever gone in to towns in Gaza or in the West Bank and indiscriminately murdered innocent civilians. The Israeli military is a defensive force. They target terrorists and only terrorists. And the tragedy 
And why we do see civilian casualties on the Palestinian side is not because they are targeted by Israel, but because they are used as human shields by their own government in Gaza, Hamas. And we've never seen images of Israeli soldiers capturing a Palestinian, even a terrorist, and mutilating their bodies the way that we've seen in Gaza, celebrating their deaths. We have not ever seen this in Israel. When a Jewish individual in Israel commits a terrorist attack against Palestinians, it is condemned outright by every Israeli, the vast majority of Israelis. Those people are imprisoned. They are sent to jail for life. There is no comparison here. This is a terror organization that has targeted innocent civilians and kidnapped babies into Gaza. Show me a moment in Israeli history where we have kidnapped babies or children or the elderly. No, we go after terrorists. Terrorists, and let's clarify what that means because some people like to argue that the IDF is a terrorist organization. No, there's no international definition for terror. However, the vast majority of definitions will include two facets. One, that these attacks are either politically or religiously motivated and two, that the target is innocent civilians. The Israeli military does not target innocent civilians, period. Hamas, this attack was almost entirely directed at Israeli civilians. A thousand innocent young people celebrating at a rave in the desert. Families gathered together on the last day of our holiday season to spend the last day together celebrating. There is no comparison we are hearing reports, and I'm sorry that I have to say this word, and, and I, 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 I want to give a trigger warning, but we are seeing horrible sexual, we're hearing of cases of horrible sexual assault, of gang rape, of mutilation, of beheadings. With all due respect, show me a video, show me evidence of the Israelis ever, ever acting in those ways. You will not find it. So everyone needs to take a, take a pause. They need to watch some of these videos. They need to hear some of these stories. And they need to see that we are not the same. Hamas is a terrorist organization that has raised their children to hate. And those young children are now grown men who went into Israel and brutalized innocent people. They saw them not as humans. They saw them as animals. And with everything that I've lived through, and I think you've lived through in Israel, Michael, I still think that we, on a consistent basis, feel compassion and empathy for innocent Palestinians who have to, li have, have to live under these tyrannical regimes. I don't see the same compassion or sympathy from people. I'm, I'm shocked, in fact, by the lack of compassion. I'm shocked that people cannot muster up an iota of empathy for family members who watched as their family, that as their other family members were being driven into Gaza or pulled out of the back of a Jeep with their hands zip tied behind their backs, bloodied up and shoved by their hair into the back seat of a Jeep and driven into Gaza. With all due respect, if you cannot find an iota of compassion, I, I don't know where to go from here. This is not the same. Israel has defended themselves from the moment this country became a country from terrorists and from armies that have tried to destroy it. And every step of the way, Israel said, reached out their hand in peace and said, we are willing to work with you. We are willing to share this land that we believe is rightfully ours and you believe is rightfully yours. And every step of the way we were told no and more war and more terrorism was waged upon us. We tried to restrain ourselves. We tried to act morally in Gaza when we would bomb buildings, warning innocent civilians in Gaza to leave those buildings, to get out of the way, while we also warned Hamas. And I hate to say it, but so many Israelis now are wondering why. Why do we bother? And we bother because we maintain that moral high ground because we want to be able to live with ourselves at the end of this. But this is the result. The result is the largest massacre of Jews in one day since the Holocaust. We will never forget October 7th, 2023. It will, it's a day that will live in infamy. It will live in infamy. Uh, to borrow a phrase, it's a very apt phrase. And uh, people should know that right now in Israel, uh, men and women, uh, people's sons uh, and daughters are going to serve in the reserves. Uh, there's been a massive call up. We all know people who are serving right now. 
Um, there are obviously many being injured and have passed away, and uh, we our thoughts are obviously with them. Um, also, Israelis are rallying to give blood to support people in any way they can to reach out to people in outlying communities, um, people from the Gaza border. Many of them have been taken to uh, safe places in other places of the country, including the Dead Sea. Uh, you've seen people raising money and, and sending goods and clothes and items that are needed for our soldiers and also for people in those communities. So there is a great spirit of uh, banding together, as uh, 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 the Lieutenant Colonel said, you know, people are united in the face of this appalling tragedy. Um, they're united at the moment, and we hope that our supporters will unite with us from around the world. Let's talk a little bit about what people can do. Uh, because I know many people have messaged me feeling helpless, asking what can I do, and I have to say I apologize to the many who have been messaging me. I just cannot keep up. But what can we do? So Absolutely. first of all, first of all, I'm I'm standing in a synagogue. I am I'm in a back room in a synagogue on what is still a holiday here in America, and I have fathers and mothers in the room behind me who are praying for their children who are on who are in the army in Israel being sent to the front lines as we speak. So the first thing that I can say, and, and this isn't minor, we're Jewish. We need to pray, and everyone out there who's supporting us, who's not Jewish, of any pray first and foremost, but secondly, speak up, raise your voice. Jonathan Konolikos said it best. We have the sympathy of the world now. We won't soon. If any, if history shows us the future, we know that this is going to turn as soon as Israel begins their ground offensive in Gaza. And we all have to continuously remind people why this ground offensive happened. We did not declare war. War was declared upon us. We are now at war because of that war that was declared upon us, unprovoked. Let's acknowledge Hamas is claiming because of things that al Aqsa, because of things that are in no way new, all of a sudden they decide to go and murder 700 Israelis? No, this has been planned for months, probably potentially for years, just waiting for the moment. So what can people do? Speak out. Stand With Us is putting out minute by minute information. We have at the bottom of the screen, the website, standwithus.com slash situation room, where you can get minute by minute updates on what is going on. Share those updates. Make videos yourself. Share our memes that we're putting out about the rocket fire. Share the videos that we're putting out that again are censored for sensitive reasons because that's how we function as Israelis. We don't put out photos of bodies and people dead. It's not our way. Share images, share stories share the information that needs to be out there for people to understand how all of this played out. So and it's worth adding also that every time people share, every time you like, every time you post a comment, it makes the post more viral. And I can tell you right now, in just the last day and a half, um, many of our videos are getting over a million, over a million views. Um, they're going far and wide. We've seen prominent people all across the internet sharing them and standing with Israel, and you can help that. Um, you can also help by reporting hateful comments, anti-Semitic comments, uh, misinformation on social media. Click on those posts and report them to those social medias. There are many rallies happening. You can see uh, listings of them on our Situation Room website. The URL is right up there on the screen, standwithus.com slash Situation Room. And you can get printable signs on our website as well that you can print yourself and take to those rallies. And another thing I would say is, you know, we're going to want you to put pressure on elected leadership and leaders in general to stand with Israel continually. And also, of course, to consider donating to great organizations. There are so many um, pro-Israel organizations like Stand With Us as well. Help keep our work strong. We need it. Um, help them. They're doing great work on the ground here in Israel and people who are getting that message out. It's so important. Yes, this is. We shouldn't feel helpless. We live in an age where every one of us has a voice and that voice can go very, very far. And all of the tools that you need, all the information that you need is at your fingertips. So be active, stay active, help us. I want to send a message to anyone watching who is not Jewish. I want you to remember something. There are only 15.6 million Jews in this world. And our voices very oftentimes are drowned out drown out by the many, many more people out there who unfortunately hate Jews or hate Israel. And so we cannot do this alone. We need everyone's help. We need everyone to pull out the stops and again, share 
post, speak out. And if you have Jewish friends, reach out to them. They are in a lot of pain today. I'm one of them and you're one of them. And it sometimes it feels very alone. We feel very alone. And so take that second, reach out to your Jewish friend. If you see somebody on the street who's Jewish, say a, a, a kind word. We need those. That gives us strength. That gives us the ability to keep going. Because sometimes I know to everyone out there how overwhelming it can feel when you see so many comments of hate and you feel like your comment is just going to be a drop in the bucket. I promise you it's not. There are other people seeing those comments and they're being strengthened by those comments. So don't ever feel like your voice doesn't matter. It does. But it only will matter if we do this together and on one united front against this horrific, catastrophic terror tragedy that we just suffered in Israel. So Charlotte, thank you so much. Once again, we are thanking our friends and supporters around the world. We are praying for our IDF soldiers and for our citizens here in Israel. And one thing is for sure, Israel cannot afford to lose any war. It will not lose this war. We will prevail. Thank you so much for standing with us. Um, Yisrael Chai. Um, Yisrael Chai.